My name is Brian Razak, and I am the CEO of Social Toaster. The history of Social Toaster's capital raising starts with me, right? Start, like, you know, no one's going to invest in you if you don't invest in you. And so a lot of times people ask me about that, and they're like, how can I go raise money? And you know, I find out they still have a full-time job, and you know, they, they haven't actually put any real skin in the game. And I think you know, the majority of the time, you're not going to get anywhere if you don't personally demonstrate that you are, for the most part, all in. So you know, I went all in, put every single dime I had into Social Toaster. Um, we did then go the friends and family route, which is pretty typical, where you bring in money from you know, very, very close friends and people that are familiar with what you're doing. Um, we also uh, did have an early on uh, individual angel investor. So our Series A was then um, happened in 2012. It was led by um, Blue Venture Investors, which is a Northern Virginia based a group of a bunch of great guys. Um, since they led the round, they um, have two board members on our, uh, we have a five person board. Um, one of them is another independent who participated. So our A round was a little bit unusual in that it was largely an angel-based um, uh, round, right? There was um, no real institutional money in, in that round. It ended up being about $2.275 million. And um, then in 2013, um, we did a bridge round. Um, so the form of that was as a convertible note. Um, and that round was led by uh, the Propel Fund of Baltimore, uh, which is uh, kind of under the TEDCO umbrella. Um, and then Maryland Venture Fund also participated in that, and then, as well as a number of other individual investors. Um, and then that uh, took us into 2014, where we did another uh, bridge round, uh, again, a convertible note. Um, and that was led by an individual out of London who um, um, is a very successful guy, uh, also one of the owners of the New York Yankees minor league baseball team, and Kevin Plank, and his um, you know, personal investment group also participated, and then a number of other individual investors. So, um, so we've raised money kind of each year, the total you know around six million or so uh, to date. One of my advisors told me um, something that, to this day, I think is probably very accurate. Um, he said that the biggest difference between the Bay Area and other sort of investment hubs or investment centers is that, you know, in, in the Valley, investors put in enough money to ensure that the business is successful. Whereas in virtually every other market, investors put in, in enough money based on what the business has done to where they think it will able to be able to continue to be successful. So it's a very different mindset. Putting it in simple terms, it means you can go out to the market and say, I've run all my numbers and I think I need $2 million. And an experienced investor, maybe out of the Bay Area, can look at that and say, no, you actually need $6 million. And as a you know, naive entrepreneur, you can say, I have no idea why I would need that much money. What would I even spend it on? And they'll tell you, people, trust us, you need that much money, right? Um, and, uh, and they do that because in their experience, that's what's necessary to get the right people, get the right team, and ensure that the business is sufficiently capitalized to deal with all the challenges and get over the hurdles and be successful. That's their philosophy. I can't comment on whether that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's, that is something I have observed to be, be true. Whereas in this region or in you know, New York or any of the other areas where there may be investment um, you know, and funding happening, the investors are, they really want to say, well, show us what you've done based on where you think the business is now, definitely tell us what you think you need, and then we'll fund you based on what you think you need. At least for us, our experience has been that, you know, then you know, we go raise what we think we need, get to a certain milestone, achieve certain results, and then we have to go back to the market, raise some more money, hit certain milestones, achieve certain results. So, um, you know, it can end up being a situation where, you know, you, you just are in a constant state of fundraising. We're contemplating right now the best uh, next step for us, um, and a Series B is, is absolutely one of the options that's on the you know immediate table.